This series tones and sculpts the arms, shoulders, chest, and upper back. You will need a stretch belt or a towel. We start our class with a warm-up, which is alternately swinging the arms as we lift our knees toward our chest. Gradually, this movement will increase in tempo, and you're going to notice that your breathing and your heart rate and your body temperature will be going up. We do this movement for about 60 seconds. Uh, we're very mindful of our posture, which is ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. To do this movement for 60 seconds not only warms up the body, but also gives you an opportunity to focus on deep breathing, which helps connect the mind to the body. This brings you into the moment and holistically prepares you for the activity or the sport ahead. Continue for a few more seconds, pull up through your center body, breathe, enjoy. It's fun to get the body ready for exercise. Now we'll bend over, picking up the weights. The first exercise we're going to do is called triceps fold over. Feet are hips width apart. Notice the arms are up at shoulder height. We're lifting, working the triceps back of the arm. Notice that the elbows are straight, the back of the neck is flat, the abdominals are in. We're lifting for about 30 seconds. We hold and now small presses in towards the midline of the body. Press one, press two, press three, press four, press five, press six, press seven, press eight, press nine, press 10, press 11 and 12, and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, hold one. Roll the shoulders back, try to maintain the position. Raise the arms slightly higher. Next movement, combining in, up, and hold. In, lift, in, lift. Notice how we both try to maintain the height of the arms, the tricep muscles, back of the arm, really experiencing the tone and shaping right now as you try to maintain the height of the weights. Turning the palms up, raising the arm slightly higher. Now the movement is a very small bend stretch. Lengthen, lengthen. Notice the triceps now are not only tightening, but they're lengthening. This gives a very streamlined look to the muscle. Trying to maintain the height for the last few. Seven, eight, nine, hold the last one, raise it slightly higher, and we release the arms down. Now we take the arms up and we start the front of the arm work, bicep curls. We're alternating for about 30 repetition. Same posture, shoulders are pressing down, knees are soft, abdominal muscles are pulling in, feet are hips width apart. We're breathing, feeling full range of motion. It's important here not to swing the weight, but to just move the arms and move the weight and trying to feel resistance in both directions. Equal breathing, inhale, exhale. Trying to keep the rest of the body still, and this is where the core muscles really come into play to hold the torso in position. Notice that we've turned the palms to face each other. This is the hammerhead position. And both hand positions work the biceps. Taking a few more reps, so we feel the resistance, feel the accumulation of the work. As we approach the final few repetition, we're going to hold the arms in position. Right there, raise the elbows. And now we're doing a set of double arm. Extend and bend. Extend and bend. The shoulders are rolling down, the chest is open. The movement is very isolated. Trying to relax the grip around the weight as we move and feeling the result of both arms working at the same time, we hold the last one, reposition, pressing the shoulders down, keeping the arms parallel. This next movement works the chest and the shoulders combined. Small pumping motions up. These sets average about 20 to 30 reps and it really depends on the size of the weight. 
we're trying to go for the feeling here, which is reaching your maximum potential. Holding still, open inhale, close exhale, open inhale, close two, inhale, three, inhale, exhale, four. This works into the pectorals, the chest, five, inhale, six. Think of reaching forward with your elbows as you close. Inhale, exhale, inhale, couple more, inhale, exhale, hold, lift. Small presses up, combining shoulder, arm, and chest. Great exercise for a combination of muscle work. And we release. Roll the shoulders back. Take the arms out to the side. Pull down, lift up. Deep breathing here. This movement really gives you a chance to open up your lungs and feel the experience of the airflow. It's a great exercise for upper back work. As you pull down, you're working into your latissimus or lat muscles. These are the muscles under the shoulder blade. As you lift, you're working your deltoid, which is the top cap of the shoulder. Pull through. Try to work in both directions, on the pull down and on the lift. Holding the last one, small pull downs getting a little deeper into the upper back now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and release. Last one is for the upper back. Notice the starting position, arms extended. Now as we pull the arms up to the sides, try to visualize that you're pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades. As you lift, the shoulder blades come close together, and as you come down, they release. Notice the back of the neck is very long, so the neck muscles are not engaged, the knees are soft. This is demonstrating a little easier version with the elbows slightly bent. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower, up. Now small little lifts to finish. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we release. Great job on that exercise. Now we balance the strengthening work with stretches. This is a very important component in core fusion. The stretches after the strengthening work help to shape the muscles. As we interlace our fingers here and we lift our arms to the rear, we're stretching the chest muscles, rolling the shoulders back. Such a great stretch for posture to help keep your shoulders down. Breathe through the stretches. Enjoy the feeling of the balance. Now as we take our arms in front, we wrap the right arm under the left, roll the shoulders down, move the hands slightly away from the forehead. The arms pull to the right, the head turns to the left. The breathing should flow deeply, shoulders pressing down. Such a beautiful feeling to open up after the strengthening work. Come back to center, switching, left arm under right, shoulders press down, the hands move slightly away from the forehead. Take a deep breath, inhale. Exhale as you pull the arms towards the left and turn the head towards the right. This stretch is really good for those knots that sometimes you get between your shoulder blades, oftentimes from working at a desk or a computer. Those muscles get really tight. So these stretches are really therapeutic. Now you can use a belt or a towel, as I'm demonstrating to connect the hands behind the back. This is a tricep stretch for the right arm and a rotator stretch for the left arm. Liz is demonstrating a more advanced version by connecting her fingers and I'm showing you the easier version by using the strap. It's important when you're stretching not to strain. You just bring your body into the place that's comfortable related to your range of motion and your flexibility. Change it over to the other side. Take the left hand behind the back. Reach around with the right hand. Connect the fingers if possible. Breathe. Try to maintain the posture of ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, knees soft and feet hips width apart. The 
What a great complete feeling for working the upper body of doing the strengthening and the flexibility work. Press your shoulders down and that completes the upper body series. Thigh Sculpt. These thigh strengthening movements combined with the stretches are proven to create long lean thighs for aesthetics and functional power for the desired endurance in sports. You will need a sturdy chair or countertop, hip height for support, and a padded surface or exercise mat. V position. We begin with a setup. You're standing about arm's length away from a chair or countertop. Thinking about your alignment first. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over knees and feet. Breathing equally, inhaling to your exhale. Place your hands about shoulder width on your chair. And then we're going to place our feet in a small V, about 45 degree angle. Heels are together as you raise them up. Bend your knees over your feet. Again, go back to the alignment principles, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, knees over feet. Inhaling, exhaling through the nose, we lower and lift a couple inches down and up with the legs. You want to inhale down and exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Any knee issues, you can stay a little bit higher. Feel the energy start to radiate in the quadriceps. And hold. Continue to hold the chair lightly. Abdominals in, supporting the back. Of course, you have a neutral spine. Your thighs are still engaged in this moment. Again, keeping the chin neutral. Eye gaze gently forward. This is strength within stillness and release. Now take a moment, just absorb what just has transpired. You may feel a burning sensation through the thighs and that's changing the muscle tone. Now we set up again, remaining arm's length away from your chair. Again, relax shoulders, continually being aware of your breathing. As you raise your heels up a couple inches off the floor, bend your knees over your feet. Remember, alignment, position, and then how much you can do in the position is our core fusion philosophy. Remember, the hand grip is very light on the chair. Now we go all the way down to the heels, come up halfway. All the way down, we're gonna do about 10 of these. Inhale down, exhale as you come up. Inhale down, exhale as you come up. Any knee issues, just stay a little bit higher. You'll feel the thighs engaged anywhere along this pathway. Keep going, inhale down, exhale up. Feel the power in the quadriceps. Down and up, down and up. Feel flow, circular movement, pause. Again, very light hand grip. Come down a little lower as Fred is doing more advanced and we release. Okay, reset. Arms length away from your chair. Arms are shoulder width apart. Breathe, aware of the breath. Look straight ahead. Feeling the lift in the abdominal wall, drop in the tailbone. As you find again, strength within stillness. Awareness of the position of the legs in stillness. Now our legs are parallel, all ten toes facing forward, feet together side by side. Breathing, dropping the shoulder blades into the upper back, lengthening the spine, maintaining a neutral curvature in the lower back, feeling the lift in the abdominal walls, this should be your posture throughout the day. Raise the heels up as high as they'll go now, up on the balls of the feet. Bend your knees over your toes. Press your knees together, inner thighs, and move a couple inches down and up now. Keeping the heels lifted as you lower lift. Keep the eye gaze forward. You're heightening your metabolic rate at this moment. 
creating more muscle density in the thighs, creating more caloric expenditure at rest. This has been my favorite exercise, love this one. Now hold, raise the heels high, press your inner thighs together, release. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper on the next set, a little bit lower. Again, regroup with your alignment, your position, arms length away from your chair, shoulders down. Breathe again, awareness of breath. Tailbone is long, abdomen is lifted. Raise your heels back up as high as they'll go. Bend your knees over your feet, over your toes. Now breathe, inhale as you lower, exhale as you come up. Once again, keeping the neutral spine. Down to knee level, more advanced as Fred is doing. I will stay a little bit higher, a little less intense version. Lower and up. Again, breathing, inhale down, exhale as you lift. Feel that circular breath. Feel the thighs reshaping. Inner outer thigh. Keep going, lower. Exhale up, lower, exhale as you come up, inhale down, exhale up, feel the breath help you gauge the movement, pause, come down, hold hips across from knee level, and release. Let the legs just now open to the side, a wide open second position, once again, your arms length away, from your chair, roll your shoulders down and back. Maintain the alignment. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Breathe, awareness of breath, even while you're standing still. Now bend your knees over your feet. Regroup, alignment. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Hips over knees, knees over feet. Feel all four corners of your feet equally pressing into the floor. And of course, maintain that light hand grip on your chair. Holding the stillness, you'll feel strength. You're engaging the thighs and the inner thighs. Now we're going to expand on the inner thighs. Place your hands on your inner thighs, gently press back back, pressing back the inner thighs and opening, stretching the inner thighs. Again, maintaining neutral breathing, inhaling, exhaling equally through the nose. Pause. Place your hands back on your chair, raise your heels up as high as you can. It will become a little more intense now as you lower and lift, lower the torso and lift, bending the knees over your feet, maintaining, of course, the light hand grip on your chair. Inhale down, exhale up, same breathing pattern as earlier. Inhale down, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, down, hold. A little more challenge, go a little bit lower as I'm doing. More basic variations, stay higher as Fred is. Raise your heels up high, holding, breathing. Raise your right arm up. Reach through the fingertips. Feel the energy go beyond the fingertips. Switch, other hand up. Most advanced version, take both hands off your chair, hold there and release. Remove your chair. Now you need a padded surface or exercise mat to balance the strength with stretch, which helps create long lean muscles. Bring your left foot forward into a lunge, left ankle bone directly underneath your knee. Hands straddle your front leg. Shift the weight off your back kneecap into the thigh and hip flexor. Now shift your hips back, extend your front leg straight. Lengthen the spine, almost think of arching the lower back here. Soften the chin, more advanced, extend your front leg forward into full split as I'm doing. And of course, breathing within the stretch. 
Now we change legs, bring your right leg forward, right ankle bone directly underneath your knee for proper alignment. Hands straddle your front foot. Shift the weight off your back kneecap, into the hip flexor, into the thigh. Again, softening the eye gaze. As you exhale, shift your hips back, extend your front leg. You may stay higher, less flexible, as Fred is doing, or you can expand on the stretch more advanced, slide forward into the full split as I'm doing, straddling the front leg with your hands. And take a big inhale, an even bigger exhale, to enjoy the depth of your stretch. Here's where you're changing the mind and the body. Gently come out of that and then sit back into a well-earned child's pose and absorb the efforts. You all did an amazing job. Long lean thighs, enjoy them. A lifted butt gives the thighs an even longer appearance. You will need a sturdy chair or countertop hip height for support. Step back about arm's length away from a chair or counter. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Be aware of your breathing. Place your hands about shoulder width on your chair. Feet are hips width apart. Keep the crown of the head reaching forward, back of your neck long. Place your left foot on the floor. Straight left leg. Soften your standing leg. Pull in the lower abdomen. Keep the shoulders level. Feel the energy in your back leg as you raise your leg up. Now lift hold. Lift pause. Lift hold. Reach beyond the foot. Keep the abdominals pulled in, bracing the position, supporting your lower back. Feel strength within stillness. Now lift again a little faster. Keep the leg elongated. Remember, you will feel your standing gluteal area begin to work immediately. And of course, the leg that you're lifting as well will be engaged. Keep the eye gaze slightly downward. If you need to take a pause, it's fine to lower your back leg to the floor as I'm doing. Now raise your back leg up, turn out the top leg, and we lift again. Reach the legs longer. Breathe. Inhale, exhale, even tempo to the breath. Keep reaching beyond the toes. Pause. Now a little faster lift. Up, up, up. Remember, soften your standing knee. Great bone density exercise as well, strengthening the bones and the muscles. And of course, aesthetically the butt. Keep reaching beyond the legs. Now hold. Keep the abdominals strong. And now bend the top leg in. Keep the top leg turned out and now begin to lift the leg up again. Lift up, hold. Lift up, hold. Realign the shoulders, press them down, pull the abdomen in. Continue the lift. Keep the back foot pointed. Again, come back to your breath to give you strength and endurance. Now a little faster on the lift. Keep a slight turn out of the top leg that is lifting. Keep your standing knee soft. You can do it. You're really feeling both legs working right now, both sides of the gluteal area working. Hold. Raise maybe a little higher. You can pause, lower the leg down to the floor as I'm doing intermittently whenever necessary. Now turn the leg to parallel. Still bent leg, reach up, hold. Reach up the back foot to the ceiling. Again, your back knee should always remain no higher than your hip. Once again, think about your shoulders down 
engage the abdomen. Now up a little faster on the lift. Up, pause. Up, hold. Up, hold. Keep pressing down with the hands into your chair for support in the upper back and the shoulder area. Maybe reach a little higher if you can with your foot. Again, maintaining the back knee no higher than your hip. Hold, pause, reach one inch higher maybe. Breathe, inhale, exhale through your nose and release down. Now we will go into the stretch, into figure four, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, pause and feel the length happening in balance to the strengthening. And release, change. Left ankle goes over right thigh and sink down. Again, breathe while you're stretching. Feel the balance again. Strength to stretch. And now we're getting ready for the other leg. Same thing, fold over your chair or counter, extend your right leg behind you, lift up parallel back leg and start to lift up hold. Up hold. Keep reaching beyond the foot. Make sure to keep your back right hip rotated forward so the hips are parallel to each other. And then a little faster on the lift. Again, try not to lift the leg any higher than your hip. Highest point should be foot to hip level. Drop the shoulders, hold, and release down. Take a pause if necessary. Now we're raising up again. If you've lowered your leg, turn the top leg out and once again, up hold. Up hold. Feel a connection of energy from the crown of the head to your foot. Again, your standing leg, your standing gluteal group will be feeling the essence of the work right now. Now a little faster. Lift, lift, up. Once again, maintain the back of your neck long. Feel the abdominal wall again, support the back. It is a back strengthening exercise as well. Keep the height of the leg. For more advanced, try to keep the leg in the air the entire time. Reaching beyond the toes if it's still extended in the air. Bend your top leg in half. Slight turn out with bent leg, pointed foot. Lift up again. Drop the shoulders. Breathe, come back to the breath as you stay longer into the strengthening phase. Breath is very helpful right now. Keep the height of the thigh. Keep the height of the foot. A little faster on the lift. You're still slight turned out, top leg, pointed foot. Once again, keep your standing knee soft. Normal breath. Inhale, exhale, circular breath. If you need to lower the foot down for a moment, feel free. As you get stronger, you'll be able to keep the foot lifted the entire time. Now ready, parallel bent leg, raise the toes up to the ceiling. Up hold, up hold. We're getting into our last series. Here's where the endurance, that interval training sets in. Reach beyond the toes. A little faster on the lift now. Keep the shoulders pressing down. Keep the breath active, even. Keep the height of the thigh. Try to keep the knee a little bit more up to your hip height. Holding here. This is the last few moments here. You can do this. Raise one more inch with the foot. Hold, breathe, and release down. Now we will go into some more stretching to balance that incredible strengthening you've just done for your gluteal area. Sitting on the floor, extend your leg straight ahead of you. Place your ankle slightly above your knee. Flex both feet. For more advanced variation on the stretch, bend the bottom leg as I'm doing, so you have shin over shin. Straight spine, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips.
flex the feet strongly. Feel the energy in the feet, the hips pressing down, the spine being very long. And for more advanced variation, you can hinge forward just slightly from your hips. Now we switch. More advanced version of the stretch, you can place your bottom leg bent, shin over shin. Think straight spine, reach the energy through the crown of the head, shoulders down, abdomen pulled in, hips level to the floor. Flex the feet, feel the energy through the soles of the feet. Feel the gluteal muscles coming back to balance. Strength to stretch. Again, for more advanced variation on the stretch, you can hinge slightly forward from your hips with a flat back. Continue breathing. Breathing very important while you're stretching. On your exhale, try to go deeper into the stretch. Lengthen the spine more. Feel the hips press down more into the floor. Relaxed, calm energy permeates the body right now. And then release up, out of the stretch. Again, coming back to that incredible alignment, posture, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, abdomen pulled in, strong. Sitting one leg crossed in front of the other, place your hands on top of the knees and breathe. You're well on your way to a firm butt. This sequence will combine small movements with intense periods of holding postures to create washboard abs, core strength, and a healthy spine. You will need a mat or padded surface and an open wall space. For this first abdominal exercise, we'll put our feet up on a wall and Liz will demonstrate the easier version of the exercise with bent knees. You place your feet on the wall, hips width apart, rest back on your elbows, pulling in your abdominal muscles and tilting your tailbone under to create an ab lock. This is really important concept in core fusion that you can breathe without moving your abdominals. Now take your hands to your outer thighs, roll your shoulders back, open your chin, look up towards your feet and breathe. You'll notice just being in this position, your back muscles are stretching while your abdominal muscles are contracting and that's why this position is orthopedic. I'm taking my hands off my legs right now and right away I can feel my abdominals working to hold me there. For those of you who do a lot of crunches, this is one crunch and you're holding the top of it. Notice as I raise my arms up, I'm increasing the intensity, hold back on to reset, Roll my shoulders back, widen my elbows. If you need to pause, follow Liz and rest back on your forearm. And I'm tapping my fist now above my knees, keeping my body in the position. Those of you working a little easier, follow Liz's version as she stops and starts and holds on one hand at a time as necessary. What we're trying to do here is just increase the amount of time we can stay in the position. When I hold on, I reset. Shoulders down, elbows wide, abdomen in. When you let go of your legs, you can pump with either one arm or both, depending on your level. Try to keep yourself going here. This is really intense. And just holding yourself in position, you're getting tremendous strength in your abdominals. Pulling in tightly to hold yourself there. Keeping your chin open to avoid using your neck muscles. When you need, elbows wide, shoulders down, just pumping the arms now by the hips, holding yourself in the position. Remember, the abdominal muscles are working in stillness. They're bracing the body and they're keeping you up off the floor. Breathe, pull in, reset. As I widen my elbows and drop my shoulders, I relock my abdominals into the position, open the chin to keep it out of my neck, and feel the power of the stillness. Just staying still is a lot of work for the abdominal wall. Breathe and focus, twisting to the left side. Now we work more into the obliques, which are the side abdominals. By now, your abdominals might be burning. Hang in there, try to keep yourself in the position. Let go if you can. Even for a second or two, you're increasing your strength. Hold on, reset, pull in. Small crunches, exhale up, exhale lift, pull in to lift. Hands off if you can. 
Arms higher if possible. Try to stay lifted off the shoulder blades. As soon as you feel yourself falling back, hold on, reposition, tapping the fists on that left side. Arms higher for a little more advanced work. Notice Liz holding on and resetting as needed. Keep yourself in the position. The longer you stay there, the stronger you're getting. And repositioning. Drop the shoulders. Rest back if necessary. Come back to center. Over to the right side. Again, this is working the side of the waist, reducing inches around the waist just by holding the position and pulling the abdominals down towards the spine. Breathe. Feel the abs working. Let go if you're ready. One hand off, other hand off. Arms up really increases the intensity. Try to hold that. Curl up, curl up, exhale up. Pull in to lift, keeping the chin open. Shoulder blades off the mat. Holding the position, tapping the fists. So we're really building abdominal strength and endurance by staying off the shoulder blades and holding the position. Arms higher to increase the challenge, which increases the amount of weight that the abdominals are holding up. Arms higher and back to center. Wide elbows, shoulders back. Notice Liz taking the break. Follow her if necessary. You'll build your strength over time. Be patient. This exercise is probably the most challenging abdominal work you'll ever do. Now side to side with the arms. Again, working into the oblique muscles as we rotate the rib cage across the waist. Side, side, side. Again, go for the endurance in this set. See how long you can stay there without touching your legs. Reset when necessary. Breathe. Side again. Side, side, crunch. Side, side, crunch. Combining oblique work and center abdominal work. Keep your chin open when you're doing this. Look up towards your feet. Breathe. Hang in there now and reset when necessary. Let's bend the knees and roll all the way up to the top. Roll the shoulders down and back. Keeping the knees bent for this set, we're going to push back just off the wall slightly and now roll back into our signature position for core fusion. This is called the curl. And in this exercise, the back muscles are stretching while the abdominal muscles are working. Now to find the position, we come back reclining on the elbows. From here, we're able to tilt the pelvis under, pull the abdominals in, and then reach up and take hold of the outer thighs. Press your shoulders down, that'll eliminate using the neck. Take the hands off the legs and slowly notice how I raise my arm to increase the challenge for the advanced athlete. Nothing like a challenge to help you increase your strength. Notice how Liz reclines back when necessary, so pace yourself and be patient. It takes time to get to the level where you can raise your arms without falling back. Reposition. Now we'll move to a variation, bending the left knee at a right angle, holding on with both hands, small crunches. One time up, hold. Exhale up, hold. Both hands off when ready. Pull in to come up. Arms higher to increase your challenge. Exhale. Exhale lift. Try to coordinate your breathing with your movement so the abdominals are pulling in as the body is lifting. Reset and roll all the way up to the top. Take your shoulders up, back, and down. Take a deep breath, but try to roll right back into the position just to maintain the momentum of what you're doing and to really experience the abdominal burn. Let's take the elbows back to the floor here and just reorganize. Again, in core fusion, the position is the most important component. So pressing your lower back down and finding that anchor position on the floor is always important before we start the real work. Taking the arms up one more time, pull in deeply with your front, tucking the tailbone under so the back stays pressed down into the floor. Hold there, breathe, and right side. 
elbows high and wide, shoulders down and back, chin is open, exhale one, exhale lift, taking one hand off, both hands off, whatever you can do, you'll find that as you do this exercise over time, your abdominal strength will increase, and you'll be able to take your hands off your leg and raise your arms up toward your ears. Hold the position, raise the arms higher to increase the challenge. Stay there, breathe, hold, and reset. Come up slightly if you fell back. Now taking both legs up, wide elbows, shoulders down. When you're in stillness, you're really working, so be patient with yourself. Take the arms up now. Notice, not falling back. Hands across the shoulder blades. Very advanced work. Try to curl up one time. Hold the position. Pull in. Breathe. Stay right there. And release, hugging the knees into the chest. Now take your left arm up by your side. Roll over to the left. Come up slowly. And now we'll do a stretch for the abdominals, which again complements the work and helps to create balance in your spine. Lie on your front. Take your elbows under your shoulders. This stretch is called the Sphinx, and you're stretching the front of your abdomen. Liz is demonstrating the more advanced version of the stretch. Turn your head towards the left. Press your shoulders down. Turn your head towards the right. Back to center. And release slowly to the floor. Now lift your hips. Sit back into child's pose and extend your arms out in front of your shoulders. Take a deep breath. You've just completed a strong abdominal series. The more you work at this, the stronger you'll get. Enjoy your progress along the way. Stretching is shaping by lengthening and is key to having long lean muscles. Flexibility is also important for sports preparation and keeping the body pain free. We recommend to use a mat or padded surface and stretch belt or towel. We begin this section lying on our backs with our arms extended along our sides, palms turned up, ready to receive positive energy. Our legs are extended, slightly turned out from the hips. Breathe through your nose with equal length to your inhale and exhale. This is Shavasana. In core fusion, we use shavasana or lying in stillness as a means of connecting the mind and the body through the breath. In stillness, our muscles release, our joints open, and our bones settle. Our minds get quiet and surrender from thought. This holistic experience has therapeutic benefits that go beyond the physical and help to establish a sense of well-being and balance. The technique of mindful stillness and relaxation have now prepared the physical body for therapeutic stretching and cool down. Breathe. Settle. Now we hug the left knee to the chest. On your next inhale, exhale and feel your body settle. Inhale to prepare for the movement. Exhale to release tension. Lengthening the bottom leg along the floor offers a tractioning effect for the lower back. Taking your right hand to your left outer thigh, rotate towards the right, stacking your left hip above your right. Open your left shoulder toward the side. Turn your head slightly to the left. Breathe. Resist the urge to force the stretch. Instead, surrender your weight into the floor. Feel the luxury of twisting through your spine and notice that Liz is doing the more advanced version with her legs straight. This stretch is fantastic for the lower back as well as it is for the side of your hip and outer thigh. Be patient in stretching. Try not to force the stretches. Stay focused on your breath and feel the weight of the body sinking heavily into the floor. Use the breath 
as a means of moving energy through your body. As you go through stages of the stretch, you're going to feel your lower back opening. Roll back to center now and change legs. Extend the left leg out along the floor. Hug the right thigh to the chest. Try to come to stillness. Breathe. Allow the weight of your body again to sink into the floor. Inhale. As you exhale, release more tension. And take now the right leg across the body using the left hand to gradually bring the knee towards the floor. Opening the right arm to the side. Gently twist the head to the right and look towards the side. The left arm is gently weighing the leg down without much pressure. The right hip is stacked above the left. The bottom leg remains extended along the floor. If you feel any pain or discomfort during the stretch, just ease back a little bit and try to find the threshold without creating tension or discomfort. Liz once more will extend her bottom leg up towards her left shoulder for a more advanced version of the stretch. It's important in stretching to hold the position in stillness, but still allow your breath to flow, which moves energy through the posture. holding for a few more seconds and we roll back to center. We'll hug both knees into the chest. Place the feet flat down on the floor into what we call constructive rest. The knees are bent, the lower back is pressing down, the feet are flat and hips width apart. Bring the chin down gently toward your throat to flatten the back of the neck turning the palms up by the sides, opening up through the front of your chest. From here, we hug the left knee into the chest once more as we prepare for the back of the leg stretch. I'll be using a band. You can also use a towel. You want to wrap that around the ball of your foot and extend up through the back of your knee. Lie back. As you reach up to take hold of the band or towel, keep your elbows slightly bent, left hip pressing down, gradually trying to bring the left leg a little closer to the shoulder. This stretches the long muscles in the back of the leg, which when tight can contribute to lower back pain. Notice the position of the belt around the ball of the foot, which helps to also release the calf muscle and stretch through the back of the Achilles tendon. Keep your breath flowing, bend your knee, and release. Change sides, hugging the right knee into the chest, feeling the weight of the body settle into the floor. Take the band around the ball of the right foot, extend up through the back of your leg. Feel free to use as much length on the band as necessary so that you can keep your head and shoulders down and reduce the straining effect from reaching up too high. The belt should really help you to relax into the stretch. Breathe. Enjoy the therapeutic effect of just holding a stretch. Gradually, as you hold the position, you might be able to see that your leg will slowly start to come back a little closer to your shoulder, especially if you do these stretches regularly over time. Next, we hug both knees in. Rock up to a seated position. Extend our legs forward, our feet flexed. Place your hands by your sides and then bend forward from your hips. Again, I'm using the belt around the balls of my feet, 
To aid my stretch, Liz is showing a more advanced version. In both cases, we're trying to keep the back flat with the posture ears over shoulders over hips. Shoulders are pressing down, the abdominal wall is pulling up. As you work on keeping the space between your hips and your rib cage, that helps to strengthen the lines of your posture. Opening the left arm out to the side, rotating the trunk to the left, the right hand crosses over to create a twist in the spine. Keep both shoulders pressing down as you stretch. Breathe back to center and reverse to the other side. Right arm up, left hand crosses over to the outside of the right ankle or conveniently using the belt if necessary and back to center. Slowly rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Knees bent, feet flat. We finish now with our balance stretch. Taking hold of the left foot, pulling back on the ball of the foot to stretch the calf. Sitting straight up and down, ears over shoulders over hips. Weight centered on the sits bones. If you're using the belt, elbows are wide, shoulders are down. The breath is flowing. Repeat the stretch on the right. You might notice a difference between the right and left side of your body. So you want to stretch to the point of resistance, even if one side is slightly different than the other. Breathing through the stretch, bend your knees, step down, and release. Now we'll finish with our balance stretch. This one might take a little time. Don't be surprised if you find yourself rolling back once in a while on this one, especially as you're learning the position. Holding onto the outside edges of the feet, this position really epitomizes the core fusion program as you combine balance, stretch, abdominal strength, and a sense of humor. Arms up, hold, cross the ankles, and release. Feel the sense of well-being as the body has really experienced a beautiful sensation through the stretching.